السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حالك؟ Let's go uh, Are you ready brother Wajdi? Yes sir Mashallah um, I think I'm also ready as well How is the weather over there in Riyadh? Uh, I have no idea I haven't left the house in a while <laughs> I guess that wasn't a good question to start things off, right? Yeah. Later, inshallah. All right. Well, we're going to begin, inshallah. We're going to give uh, we're going to give some time, brothers and and maybe sisters to join, inshallah. The Facebook is already on. Yeah. Right now, we're uh, I'm just uh, transferring to Facebook as we speak. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and. Uh, Go in. I'm just gonna let's talk fitness. That's the theme of the day is fitness, inshallah. Everyone is home. Bismillah. All right. Can you see here, it? We, here we go. As we speak, we're transferring to Facebook. Got it. Okay, yeah, we got it. it yes. Go. You got it? So you'll post it on the various websites? Yeah, we got it. Here we go. Okay, I posted it on mine. Perfect. All right, now you want to turn it down from your end, Akhi. Uh, uh, like the computer itself needs to be turned down so we don't have any um, any echoes. Okay. I'll be able to hear you afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. I think technical issues looks like we're past those. Alhamdulillah. So uh, if anyone is joining us now, um, live, I would appreciate it if uh, you would type live in the comments. That way we know that we're online and we're ready to discuss. Wa alaikum as -salam. So we have the first feedback, alhamdulillah. Okay, so if you're watching live, type live. And uh, later on, if you're not watching live and you're watching the replay, if you're watching this after we're done, yeah, and you're not right now, type replay in the comments. Also type live. Hayran, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we have some brothers joining. Alhamdulillah, looks like everyone is, uh, yep, yep, we're live. Alhamdulillah. So, the discussion today, um, Brother Wajdi Akari, I'm having the, the, the awesome pleasure of uh, talking to you uh, for the first time face to face. Alhamdulillah, we've only started talking for the last maybe 10 days or so, to be honest. And mashallah, the brother is almost like I've known him for the last 10 years. Alhamdulillah. This is one of the and the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Akh Wajdi, uh, she said, you know, I haven't gone outside. I haven't gone outside either. You know, everyone's sitting home. Everyone is relaxing. But uh, I think a lot of people would like to do some activities. And that's what we're here for today, to motivate people to change the lifestyle. Now, with Ramadan coming up, I mean, how do you feel about that right now? Ramadan is coming up. Alhamdulillah, I've taken on this lifestyle of fitness. How do you manage in Ramadan? Like, do you, do you continue to do what you do in Ramadan? Or... Or what, what do you do? Do you just take a break? Do you go light? Give me just an overall vibe of how you feel about that. All right. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala bayna Muhammad. First of all, the pleasure is all mine that I am sharing this uh, screen with you. Okay. And uh, I welcome uh, all the uh, brothers and sisters who joined us. Um, it is a privilege to have you around. I guess a lot of people are available because most of us are on lockdown and and being on lockdown comes with a lot of disadvantages and we usually focus on those, but it also comes with a lot of hidden blessings that we seem to overlook. Um, and so I guess from a Dawah point of view, we want to highlight some of the potential advantages and benefit that we can capitalize on while we are at home. Um, the fact that we are not able to go outside as much as, as much as we used to in the past is heartbreaking. And for many people, it becomes an excuse to drink from huge mugs all day and do nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And, and for, okay, for many is, of us... Okay, this is, this is a mug, but wallahi, it's green tea. It's and not, of course, brother. Of it's course. It's not what you think it is. It's, 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 you otherwise, shame. Shame on assuming bad about a brother. No, no, no. This is, uh, this no, is tea, I <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. And this is, uh, and this is coffee. But, uh, no, seriously, the, a lot of people think that this is a green light to become unhealthy or to stop working out uh, because we are at home and home is not necessarily a place made for exercising. Um, especially those people that go the extra mile in Ramadan. 
inshallah, we will prove that uh, first and foremost, the fact that we are uh, at home all the time does not prevent us in any way, shape or form from working out. And we can discuss details uh, later, inshallah. And also Ramadan must remain to be an opportunity to lose weight and not gain weight. No matter how you look at it, fasting, which is approved uh, as and, and traditionally known to the fitness freaks and the diet, diet, uh, dietitians and so on and so forth as the intermittent fasting as one of the most successful means for you to lose weight. It's impossible that a Muslim manages to fast even more than the average uh, person and then gain weight at the end of the day unless we're doing something very wrong. And we will address that also, inshallah. So, yeah, 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 it's all about being positive right now. Yeah, it's something I sometimes wonder about. Okay, now, now, before we start, because again, alhamdulillah, people are joining as we speak. Uh, I guess it's probably a good idea to kind of, I mean, again, like I said, we haven't had much time to discuss you and I and discuss in terms of knowing each other or people that maybe don't know me or you enough. Um, alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm married. I've been married uh, since 2005. I have two children, alhamdulillah. One is 10 years old, my daughter, Bayan. My son Ahmed is seven. Um, and the reason why I'm sharing this information is because I wanted to show people that even if you're married and you're working and you have responsibilities, it doesn't mean that you just, obviously everything just stops. You know, this is the stereotype. I don't know uh, how you feel about that, but you know, people, uh, sometimes you have these brothers, mashallah, they're physically fit and they're doing, and then when they get married, all of a sudden down here, you start getting this, um, this thing happening, you know, because I'm married now, so it's time to just Pregnancy. relax. And I've gotten my women, so no more incentive to work out yet. I call it I call it wrong gender pregnancy. <laughs> That's a good name uh, to give. Akhi, tell us about yourself. And mashallah, and the mother was you married as well. You have how many children, mashallah? Uh, by Allah's grace and mercy, of course, uh, the Muslim. Whenever you hear something that pleases you about your fellow brother, it's the sunnah to ask Allah to bless it. Um, uh, that is the the actual proper means to avoid uh, hasad and yes. envy, evil eye, and so on and so forth. So anything you hear, Allah uh, as opposed to saying wow. Uh, there's no problem with wow as long as you remember the barakallah fi. I'm an old I'm an old citizen. I consider myself to be an old citizen. I've passed a 40 year old uh, mark. Now of course uh, your age, that your actual age is the one based on the Hijri calendar, as you uh, uh, brother uh, uh, Wasim would know. So if, if you're born 1400, I believe we're close in age. Uh, we are, right now I'm 40 years old officially. Now Gregorian, I'm, I've also reached the 40 year old because I was born 1980. Um, I have four children. Uh, my eldest, mashallah, Musab is 15 years old. Mashallah. Uh, so yeah, very soon uh, he could be my size. Yes. Um, and I know this is the reason why this is important because by Allah's grace and mercy, when I am at the gym working out, the people are usually under the impression that I myself I'm still a teenager of some sort. Yeah. And so it is a major surprise for them that uh, you are at that age and yet you're trying to remain fit. And this is something to, to be uh, complimented. Uh, this is something to be pondered upon. Uh, yeah. Not because of me, but because I believe this is the proper Islamic way. So anytime we highlight something, it is not about uh, self prestige and self admiration. It's about, am I doing what Islam teaches or not? If I'm doing what Islam teaches, then that's praiseworthy, not because of the individual, but because of the lifestyle. And so I believe 100% that this is a lifestyle. You do not become a sheikh and then therefore you become overweight and you become obese and then you don't work. And that's, that's a sign of zuhud, as many people consider it asceticism and that I don't care about this dunya. I'm preparing to go to the akhirah. Eh, but they need to be able to carry you when you go to the akhirah. Yes. And if the uh, the have mercy on the, the people the people are going to carry you on their shoulders when they're taking you to the gravesite. So how, how did the Prophet ﷺ conduct himself? Uh, how much did he eat? Uh, how fit were the Sahaba? Yes. Uh, these are matters and subjects that are overlooked primarily because the person, if he's not living like that, he cannot speak about it. He doesn't feel the courage to speak about it. A lot of people criticize me. I want to defend myself a little bit. Yes. That, uh, I've shifted from da'wah to fitness. No, alhamdulillah, da'wah, I've never stopped. And I ask Allah that I will never stop. No. But the circumstances are beyond me. If we had certain venues that were asking us to come on a weekly basis to give lectures and those venues closed down, you don't have the same situation. And so uh, the, the, the da'wah is, is separate. It's a separate subject matter. But I'm trying to bridge 
between the fact that you can look after your health in an Islamic way and you can try to, you know, still uh, uh, propagate the deen of Islam and there is no conflict between these two. They, they go hand in hand as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, okay, the it thing is, I think you can... Other, yeah, you're right, because, you know, this, the, the impression people have is, oh, uh, uh, you're either looking after your dunya or your akhira. It's, exactly. It's the other, you know, the, the, the thing is, okay, if you're physically fit and you're working out, then this guy's probably not really praying five times a day and he's just paying attention to his... Why does it have to be that way? That's the thing, right? And this is the problem. So, mashallah, you're 40 years old. I was born in 1396 Hijri, so we're four years apart. I'm 44 now, alhamdulillah. So, again, brothers and sisters, it just goes to show that, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, like, is, we're, not, we're not here like 25-year-olds talking about being fit uh, because we want to be looking good so we can get married. We're already there. Like, we don't, there's no incentive for us to, I mean, if you want to think of it this way, we're already there. We have a family, we have children, alhamdulillah, and, and everything is fine. Um, it's about self. Uh, you feel you feel good. Yeah. To me, it, it has to do with with acts of worship. I, I the salah while being fit is not like the salah while you can barely make ruku or barely make sujood. If you happen to be blessed to go on Hajj, you will get a test of your endurance and your your physical fitness during Hajj. Uh, even if you have a five star Hajj, you're 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 meant to go through some difficulty, and that that difference appears even in acts of worship. So. It's yes. about actually you being able to do what you're supposed to do as a man or as a woman with your family while maintaining your identity. Okay, let's, let's break formalities here. So, uh, you know, that poster, that banner, alhamdulillah, by the way, I should have put this on the banner. My wife, mashallah, is the one that designed it, of you and I. You know, it almost looks like one of those uh, WrestleMania promotions, yeah, and a versus match or something. So not that we're going to fight now or wrestle or anything. We're not there yet, Aki. You never <laughs> know, People that know me know how competitive I am. So oh. don't, don't press the wrong button because I, I will just, Allah told. Eh? I'm like one away from losing it. Allahu Akbar. We're just, Where are you just, going? Just, Where are you going with this? We're just a virtual thing. Oh, no, no. Let's talk about some stats, Akhi. Let's talk about some stats before we start. You know, just, uh, you know, uh, I weighed myself, alhamdulillah, I'm 150 pounds, uh, which is about 68 kilograms, yani, taqriban. And 175 centimeters tall, and which is five foot eight inches. That's my my stats. What what are yours? What, what how high are you? What do you weigh? I'm I'm a shorty. Those who know me in person, uh, they always think when they hear my voice that they're gonna meet this kind of dinosaur or some monster. Then when they see me, they're like, um, "You're the you're the guy that who's the, I'm like." So I always get this reaction. I'm actually 167 centimeters, so I'm seven centimeters uh, shorter than you are. And I weigh 58 kilograms. Um, yeah, I've, I've fluctuated between 55 to 60, depending on whether it is uh, muscle mass or if I, I lose muscle, gain fat, uh, gain, uh, or gain fat, lose muscle. I fluctuate between these, these two, depending on how often I'm working out. But this is my average, 55 to 60. Well, brother, to be honest, I thought we were both the same size. I guess I'm a little bit bigger and taller, which, I mean, it, hey, it, it's, it's Allah's creation, right? But what, what about the what about the the bicep size up here? What what? Uh... Look, you see that? Do you see the background? Do you see the background? Why? Why? See the logo? Yeah. That's my arm. Allahu Akbar. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Okay. Allah bless. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna flex. Okay, I'm not gonna flex. Then I I'm not gonna even dare. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, you should skip this one. Jump to the next one. Exactly. Khairan, inshallah. Okay, okay, so um, I think, inshallah, by now, uh, we're going to kind of get into the, the actual topic. Uh, brothers and sisters, just want to mention something. I will be checking sometimes the, the Facebook uh, comments. Um, uh, we want to try make, to make this as interactive as possible, inshallah. We're going to be on here for about an hour, an hour and a bit. And um, if there are any questions you have, like, if, if, by the way, if we don't answer, if you say, Assalamu alaikum, and we don't say, Wa alaikum as-salam, or if you say something nice, we don't... I'm not ignoring you, Allah. I'm seeing all the comments, but if anyone has any questions that we can all benefit from and that we can, inshallah, address in the program, then uh, we'll, we'll gladly take those questions, inshallah. So every now and then I'll be checking uh, the Facebook, uh, the questions. Uh, some people have asked also before I begin, or before we begin, sorry. It's not, this is, by the way, not meant to be an interview. This is just a discussion, alhamdulillah, between the brother Wajdi and myself. Um, some people are asking, will this be available after? Of course it will be. I'll make sure that it's available. Brother Wajdi on his channel, on his YouTube channel, will make it available. Uh, I, I believe on your Facebook uh, uh, walls as well, you probably upload. Yes, yeah, Inshallah, this will be available. 
And, and what we want from you today, inshallah, hopefully uh, our aim today, and Brother Wajdi can, can, can back me up on this one. Uh, I, if I'm going to put it in one word, is to motivate you. To motivate you to take on that lifestyle, which many people are, yeah, and they're procrastinating. They're thinking, oh, I want to do it, but I don't want to do it. There's a lot of uh, procrastination. The sweep. True, true. You know, it is difficult. Wallahi, to be honest with you, brother Wasim, it's probably one of the most uh, difficult challenges because it requires it requires everything from you. It requires paying attention to your your eating habits. It requires physical uh, durability. It requires psychological. Sometimes you're physically there, but mentally you're stressed out. You don't want to work. There are so many different factors that become obstacles in the way for you to remain motivated. A lot of people have motivation, but it, its span is very short. They get motivated, motivated for a day, two, a week or two, a month or two, then it kind of spirals out and then uh, psh, it just vanishes. Then they go back to worse, a worse condition than the one they were in before they started the whole thing. So yeah. I think the biggest challenge is how to remain motivated. That's probably what would be the tricky part. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I think the motivation part is important because that's how you start. And then after that, it's making it into a habit. You know, ah. because once you're motivated, then you begin, you might get excited for a week, for a month. You go, wow, I'm seeing a difference. And well, no, I'm not seeing a difference. Why am I doing this? I'm going to stop. And, and you know, I, I, I have done, I'm going to, this is going to be funny. Okay. My first exposure to people that were bodybuilders and, and well, whatever people, when we were little, we used to watch that wrestling, you know, that nonsense, uh, uh, acting, WWE? yeah, WWF, whatever, E, oh, whatever. It's called. Is, yeah. <laughs> when I was little, we used to watch it. Actors. Yeah, but anyways, go ahead. Yeah, but so so when I was little, you know, we used to watch them, and I was like, wow, they're big and strong, and we didn't know any better, you know. Even in Saudi Arabia, by the way, I was born in Khobar, um, and uh, I was born in Saudi, alhamdulillah, and uh, it used to come on TV over there. We used to watch it, and the commentator was speaking in Arabic, and I remember what he used to say. And again, I looked up to these people. I thought, wow, they're big and strong and I want to become like that. And then you realize that a lot of them, um, yeah, they exercise, but they use a lot of drugs and things to really pump themselves and make themselves look much bigger than they really are in real life, which have a lot of yeah, any, uh, side effects and negative things. And, and, and you know, it's funny. I say this because as we grew up and, and, and I watched some of these people I used to see when I was little, they, they died at 50 and 45. And I'm like, what happened to you? You know? And so th th maybe, maybe the, the thing I saw was the wrong thing, but it definitely pushed me in the direction of wanting to be fit. But these people are definitely not the example to follow. Even the professional bodybuilders, I find, actually, like I know you, you're, you probably keep up with some of this stuff. They're not really using natural means, 100%. Of course, of course. Uh, these people are, are, are one of two, one of two uh, scenarios. Scenario number one, they're, they're um, relying on supplements. Uh, yes. which is, is not exactly the, uh, the, the bad stuff, but still a lot of protein, uh, creatine, uh, BCAA, and a lot of, a lot of chemicals uh, that I, I, at some point, by the way, I used, to, uh, I used to use that, like just protein, like protein powder, That's, which is not, it's not exactly like those are two in steroids, but still, even that, I reached the point where I wanted to be 100% natural. So uh, you reach a point where, you don't want to really rely on any external substance. Whatever your body needs, you can get from natural sources, from organic sources, to the best of your ability. And ultimately, our goal is not to eventually take off the shirt and go and pose naked anywhere in the world. And so as long as your objective is not to have this ripped uh, uh, body, which even if you were to have, uh, for what reason? Just so you can admire yourself all day? No. So you never ever have to be in a predicament, in my opinion, where you have to take any supplements to reach results. You can achieve the results that you want. Well, we're not talking about you actually being right now some, some Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee or someone who's extremely cut. Uh, if you just don't want to, if you want to be healthy, as in you don't have excess body fat, none of this is needed. All you got to do is make sure that you have what they call the caloric deficit. That yeah. the amount of calories you burn per day is, is uh, more and larger than the amount of calories you take in, and you're in, you're in a safe. If you anything beyond that is extra, but it shouldn't be on the expense that you take all these supplements and spend a lot of money on it so you can grow artificial muscle that will eventually vanish as soon as you stop. Yeah, the person, if they, if they take these artificial means, uh, subhanAllah, what happens is they look worse than, the, than what they did even before they started. 
صحيح so a lot of times correct الحمد لله اخي بارك الله فيك so now right now we are um, الحمد لله about a week away from Ramadan and Ramadan is a time you know many of us look at it and, and it's, it's a good way of looking at it uh, to uh, increase your iman and to abandon sins and things like this الحمد لله read the Quran and do a lot of ibadah and this Ramadan is going to be unique because we're not going to be going to the masajid we're going to be home um, it's going to be different um, so the thing uh, I want to I want to sort of uh, ponder on a little bit with you is not I want to encourage everybody that Ramadan is not just the time for only the spiritual aspect I think we should try to incorporate the physical aspect into it so things like eating habits things like exercising um, in Ramadan and and you mentioned this in the beginning of the of today's pro- program that some uh, some people like they put on weight in Ramadan like how does somebody become fatter in Ramadan from your experience how does that happen I'll tell you what I tell you what happens it's it's lack of discipline um, it's lack of discipline if you don't have any one of us who doesn't have discipline is bound to get himself in trouble and it's because the lack of understanding of the purpose of fasting uh, as we know we, we could turn this religious quickly um, and we should actually the Absolutely. objective of fasting is so we may achieve taqwa um, and so if, if taqwa was achieved by merely not eating and drinking, then everybody in the world would be somewhat of a taqi. But we know for a fact that there's, it's beyond that. There's a lot of things that have to be incorporated for that. And so if we were to do all the right things while fasting and then we were to ruin that after fasting, then we haven't achieved taqwa. And uh, at the same level and in parallel, if we were to stay away from eating and drinking while fasting and then as soon as we can eat, we go all out then we really were it's the same thing as not sinning while fasting than sinning after you break your fast now you're not eating while fasting and then you're eating like crazy it is not allowed for you to stuff yourself the hadith of the prophet وسلم, is clear cut and not negotiable that the son of adam does not fill a container worse than his stomach yeah. that the worst container you can ever fill from among all the containers is your own stomach your own belly and sufficient for you is, is uh, a few bites, a few bites. How many Muslims live by the few bites rule to keep you back straight? If it's inevitable, you want to eat, it's your day, you feel like you want to knock it out, then it's one third for food, one third for drink, and one third for you to breathe. If we, if we apply this hadith, there is no way on earth you would ever be overweight unless you have some other genetic problem and that's, yeah. that's not part of the discussion. Yeah, we're not, we're not here to... We're not here to, um, um, Brother Wajdi, I think the sound, is your sound okay? Bismillah. Um, I'm okay. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, yeah, no, we're fine now, alhamdulillah. No, okay, the thing is, I want to make this clear to people because I know some people might be watching who are, they have a medical condition and it's just how they're. We're not talking about these people. Just want to we're yeah, all no, Allah, 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 we love everybody and we're not here to make you feel if you're if this is something medical that you have that you can't control we can respect that and understand that no problem but the majority of people Allah and maybe you can back me up on this one uh, are not in that state of having a health condition that makes them fat the majority are not like that they're a minority most people is just uh, it's just lack of discipline no, so, they, they wind up we wind up gaining weight in Ramadan because it's the same formula of caloric deficit. If you, if after you break your fast at iftar, you eat a meal of 1,500 calories, and I think most Muslims probably have more than that. Between the few dates and the, and the leban and the samosa, and then, uh, you know, kibbe and alkusa, and we get into all this stuff. Oh, you're, yeah. you're averaging a good 1,500, 2,000, uh, two hours later, they stuff another, I don't know, half a kilo of sweets. And then at midnight, you you eat again. You wind up, you're actually eating between uh, Isha, between Maghrib and Fajr, like four meals of, of 1,500 calories each or more or less. And, and during the day, you were primarily sleeping. So fundamentally, you are taking more calorie than what you've burned because you're lazier while you're fasting. Of course, you're going to get fat. Yeah. And the saddest part is not just about fat. Uh, according to statistics, at least here in the kingdom, uh, the hospitals get packed with people from heart failure and heart attacks, and, uh, uh, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. 
a lot of uh, medical complications are, rise during the month of Ramadan because of this eating habit that the people ex you know, apply throughout the Ramadan. So it, it's, it's not just about you not looking as good. No, now we're talking about your well-being being at stake. Your, your livelihood, you being alive or dead, is now a subject matter of discussion because of how we go crazy in Ramadan. Uh, brother Wajdi, uh, because we promised the, the, the listeners and the viewers, uh, Sister Um Abdullah actually asked, is asking a question. And by the way, this is open to brothers and sisters. We're not just talking about the brothers. Um, she has the following question, and, and maybe we can start with you if, you if you can give her some feedback, and I might have something to add. She says, what do you advise as females to be consistent? Because mostly nowadays in the lockdown, we are dealing with our family 247 and managing home, the home and our emotions and other people's emotions as well. Um, normally, she says, I'm consistent, but the lockdown is a problem now. And we don't know when it's going to end and why I want to be really consistent in Ramadan. So she's talking about consistency. She's talking about the challenges at home. I think uh, this is not just uh, only for the, for the sisters, but the brothers, I think we have that. Some of us are working from home. So overall, what do you advise about consistency? Because again, we talk about motivation and habits, right? So how, how do we maintain that? Like, how did you do it when you started your lifestyle? Yeah, well, uh, here's, here's the challenge. The, the thing is you need to train your psyche and your body to what you want to achieve. Um, and, and the difficult part is that transitional phase. This is where a lot of people drop out. It's like you join a, a, you join a university, you join a class, and you find the level of activity is, is very high for you. You're not at that level. So you don't want to challenge yourself. You drop out. You bail out. You leave. You exit. If you're able to hang in there that lo long enough for you to become accustomed to it, then the rest is a piece of cake. So the, the biggest, and, and by the way, even if you were to let your guard down a little bit afterwards, you're fine. You'll be able to easily recover. Yeah. But that first stage is the most difficult one, but it's the most rewarding one. And so what, what I'm saying is, uh, for example, uh, coffee. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adamant uh, fanatic of coffee. And I could promise you that in the early stages, the concept of drinking coffee without sugar was the most ludicrous idea to me ever. Like I would literally look at people that drank coffee with no sugar and say like, yani, what are you drinking? Poison? You just, you just want to, are yeah. you teasing yourself? There's no point. There's no use in drinking coffee if you're not going to enjoy the taste. Or at least that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, or the same applies to tea. Then I reached a point where I wasn't happy with my form and physique. And I, I was like, wait a second, I'm getting old and your body, your metabolism is no longer the same. Now everything I eat is affecting me. When I did that transition, it, it wasn't the first cup of coffee without sugar was all, like vomit uh, uh, worthy. It just was nasty. And then it took a days and weeks. Then within a few weeks, I reached a point where one time by mistake, I went to a coffee shop and they, fundamentally the coffee shop doesn't add sugar to your cappuccino. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy added sugar by mistake. When I took the first sip, I, I almost threw up. I was like, what is, what is this, a cheesecake? This is a, it was the sweetest thing I had ever drunk in, in yes. my life. So I learned from this that it's, it's training. Now I'm able to drink coffee with, without sugar and I cannot even entertain the idea of sugar. So the same thing about everything I'm saying is the same thing. You want to work out, but you're too lazy. You make it a point to work out. Challenge yourself in whichever way it is. Um, a lot of challenges make it easy for you. Join a challenge. Like there's a hundred day, a hundred push-ups per day challenge. If you challenge yourself, it's more, and you have companions who are with you on the same page. They're going to follow up with you. Hey, hey, did you do, did you do a hundred push-ups? If you're on your own, you're going to be lazy. Find that motivation. Go through that difficult phase and then it becomes a lifestyle. Once it goes from uh, a goal to becoming a lifestyle, khalas. Then you set sail, you're in the middle of the sea, you have your, uh, you know, whatever they call it, a shira, and you just, you just kick back and you let it go. If you want to enjoy yourself a little bit, go eat a burger followed with a, you know, a donut followed, with, it's okay because now your body is used to eating healthy. You can, you can play around with it. But if every other day you fail, you're not going to get there. That's the thing. And subhanAllah, the other thing, as you were talking now, 
You remind me of something, okay? The Sunnah, we, we're taught that, that good deeds, um, it's better to have a small good deed which is continuous instead of having one big one and you stop. Wow. I don't see any reason why we can't use that as an analogy for this thing too. So, 100%. And it, and it doesn't mean, okay, you, when you begin, I'm not saying, okay, start by going to the gym and be there for five hours the first day. You're going to give up. Like, you're going you're gonna to quit. Just like, for example, if you want to stay up at night to read Quran and worship Allah, if you stay up the whole night, like those, one of those three people that came and asked uh, one of uh, Muhammad Sallallahu wives, uh, you know, about his worship and, oh, I'm not going to marry a woman and I'm going to stay up the whole night and I'm going to fast and not break my... It's not like that. So you, you, you have to make sure that you do things in baby steps if you have to in the beginning. Start off light. Start off with push-ups. Start off with sit-ups. You don't have to have like, uh, you know, equipment. Like many of us now... Alhamdulillah, like we're trapped at home and we have, you can look at it in different ways. You can look at it negatively or positively. I think it's a blessing that we're home with our families and it's an opportunity for us. You don't have to have a lot of equipment to actually exercise at home. So I some people might think, well, I don't have, you know, a gym at home. I don't have the equipment. And, and I think when you, when you exercise, you go to the gym, right? You don't, you don't have anything at home or? I, well, I mean, look, honestly, because... I don't want it to be, I'm glad you mentioned this, uh, Brother Wasim. I don't want this to be a prerequisite because one of the reasons behind procrastination is once I have my quote unquote gym in the house, then the ball is going to start rolling. No, no, no. You need nothing. You need your body. If you have a body, if you have limbs, you're good to go. Push ups is considered one of the best exercises ever. The amount of muscles it engages and the results that you can achieve from merely doing push-ups is beyond what you can imagine. The same applies to squats, air squats. So between air squats and push-ups, and if you have any bar to do some pull-ups, technically you're good to go. You can stick to a very uh, moderate uh, exercising routine where you do them in sets, amount of for so many minutes, for so many reps, and you, you're good to go. If now, if you want to build more muscle, you want to achieve certain results in particular areas, then you can incorporate dumbbells and barbells and a bench and that's all bonus. You don't need any of that. Yeah. You don't need any of that. You know what happens since, since the lockdown, I, I'm, I'm the type who loves running. I love to run and I love to walk. Uh, and so I use my Samsung uh, smartwatch to track how many steps. My average, I, my target is 10,000 steps per day. I must get those in no matter what. Alhamdulillah. Ever since the lockdown, I'm, you know, the, the, on average, the day, I, some days I end with 600 steps, 700 steps. I mean, where am I going to go at home? Uh, what has helped me get out of this is phone calls. I'm the type of person who can't speak on the phone while sitting down. Anytime I have the phone, I pace. And I'm so... The Hey, the last few days, yes. because of these, because of pacing, I actually achieved eight, nine thousand steps per day while on the phone. Uh -huh. And usually, those ten thousand steps are between the gym, between work at work. I walk from my office to the bathroom, to the masjid, to the lunch break. Now I'm able to achieve almost the same result within the, within my house, which uh -huh. proves that if I wanted to, and I, I was lazy, if I wanted to, I could have. I could have made it a point to actually walk around the house, going from room to room, carry one of your children, which is adding extra weight to burn extra calories. Uh, you could have actually found a way around it. I didn't. It, it came accidental, but you could have found a way around it in your own house to still burn a massive amount of calories by moving your body. And there's no excuse. You don't need any equipment. Okay. I wonder, do you know something? Uh, I just thought of something now. Um, one brother actually messaged me. I did a, a video like a couple of weeks ago just to start things off about fitness. And, and he said something to me that um, many people are overweight and the weight that they have on them, it stops them from being able to do the, the exercises that they'd like to do. You know, like they have a belly or, you know, they're just too, too heavy to even do a push up. I mean, so personally, I told them, listen, like it's not just about the exercise. I think half of it is exercise and half of it is diet as well. And so we want to correct that. Yeah. Can I correct that, please? Yeah. Uh, very good. It's actually 80% diet, 20% exercise. There's a uh -huh. discrepancy, or uh, there's a the difference of opinion among the nutrition scholars, whether it is 70 30 or 80 20. But yeah, it's like, definitely not 50 50. Now you did this. Does that mean there are four schools in the. Uh... 
فيتنس ار فور مذاهب يا ده مذهب اوف كيتو مذهب اوف خير ومذهب مذهب مينز يعني باث واي سو نوت We're not mocking anything. We're just, it's that yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. So it's actually 70, 30 or 80, 20. Uh, the, if, again, again, you, you know how, how much do you have to work out? Just try. Go on a treadmill and run for X amount of time. You actually see the end result will be 100 to 200 calories if you burn those. Habibi, the, the average muffin you eat is 500 calories. Allahu Akbar. <clears throat> so just do the math. We, let's, we have to be realistic. Do the math. Um, if you're eating two muffins, you actually need to work out for three to four hours to, to break even. Oof. So if you were to not eat this muffin and then work, run on the treadmill for half an hour, your total calorie intake was 1,700 calories. Your basic metabolic, metabolic rate is 1,500. You burnt an extra 400. So now you took in 1,500 or 1,700. You burned 1,900. That's 400 calorie deficit. Now you're going to lose weight. Uh, so the biggest challenge is what are, you, what are you shoving down your trap, as they say, down your throat? People eat all types of crazy stuff, man, and they think it's, it's a picnic. Uh, the, the junk food, junk food is, a, is a serious uh, crime against humankind. Processed food is a, is a crime against humankind. Sugar, processed sugar is a crime against humankind. That we have been trained to incorporate into our lives. We have addictions to it, and this is our weakness. If you're able to control that, the rest is easy. Yes, yes, the, yeah. the, the sugar part that you mentioned, Akhi, I mean, uh, sugar, like white sugar, I mean, it, 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 it actually looks okay compared to corn syrup. Hey, corn hey syrup, High fructose corn syrup, the, the, because it's so much cheaper, they get it from corn. They sweeten like the poppy people drink it. Most stuff today is not sweetened with sugar. صحيح. You know, yeah, and sometimes, you know, like uh, Pepsi and Coke, I remember like they sometimes have, oh, Pepsi Classic. I'm like, Classic? What's so classic about it? Oh, we use sugar. I'm like, what were you using before, after the sugar? <laughs> Corn syrup? Like, oh my. So your, your blood sugar level just spikes from having like these sweet things, you know, like, so white sugar sometimes is actually like, if you have a little bit of it, it's, it's more tolerable than... You know, unlike you, Akhi, like when I drink my, again, this is tea. This is nothing else. Don't get any ideas, right? When I drink my tea and my coffee, most of the time, especially my green tea, it has to be bitter. My black coffee has to be. The only time I might sweeten is if I have uh, coffee with milk, you know, a little bit of maple syrup in there just for the flavor. But you reach a point, like Brother Wajdi said, where your taste buds cannot stand something too sweet. You know? So because you said, Akhi, 80% diet. Uh, Wasim, brother Wasim, I don't want to freak people out again because I don't want everyone to feel that uh, now taking in any of this is a crime. I and mean, now, of course, we're trying to motivate you here. So please put things in, in, in the context of, of what is being said. You're not going to become a fundamentalist in a sense that, you know, it's a crime against yourself to eat some of this stuff. It's okay every now and then in moderation, but it shouldn't be your daily diet. Your daily diet should be fresh. Uh, uh, healthy, nutritious, organic food. That's your standard. Yep. Exceptions do exist. No problem. 100%. But they have to remain exceptions. For many of us, the exceptions are the standard. Once yeah. in a while, we eat something healthy, but breakfast, lunch, and dinner is fundamentally, along with the snacks in between, is just junk food all, all across. And so, you know, that's where the challenge is. Just make it, keep it as an exception. I'm not saying it's haram, but if you want to achieve results, then you need to be a little bit more serious. Subhanallah, you know, and I, again, I didn't know that, that the diet was 80%. I was under the impression it was 50-50. So I think Ramadan is a very good opportunity for people to clean up their act when it comes to their dietary habits. Because, uh, you know, you're going to eat for iftar. You might have a few things at night, and then there's suhoor. And that's it. Like, during the day, you're, you're not really doing anything, right? So if somebody can, can develop that habit of avoiding the junk food, quote unquote, or whatever the stuff is that, that's bad for you in Ramadan, you know, like I think one Ramadan, for, I'll give an example. I think one Ramadan was two Ramadans ago, I think, or that. I said, you know what? I'm not going to have any processed sugar whatsoever during Ramadan. I might have a fruit. Dates are not a processed sugar. Dates are completely blessed and fine. But I said, I'm not going to have any. So maybe in Ramadan, uh, brothers and sisters, I think a suggestion I have anyway, um, is that maybe you can cut out 
some of the unhealthy things in Ramadan because it's 30 days or 29 days. If you develop that habit and after Ramadan, you're going to find yourself, you're not going to go back for the most part to that, to that stuff, you know? Absolutely. Bro, I mean, people, non-Muslims would, would, would pay money to have the, the, they would pay money to a dietitian who would give them the Ramadan schedule that we have. And we have it as a, as a guidance and revelation from Allah. They would pay money to be able to have someone give them the same strictness. Because for you to abandon, you understand, once, once you've used up your, uh, the carbohydrates and whatever energy that you have, uh, then your body will start shifting to your body fat and it will, it will begin to burn that. So at some stage in your fast during the day, your body is already burning all of the fat that you need to get rid of that you've been working very hard to, to emit. Um, the challenge is when you break your fast, this is where you need to be reasonable, not just for your health, but I would say for your taraweeh. And mm. I know you, I know you look me in the eye and tell me that you've ever enjoyed a proper taraweeh after having been stuffed for iftar. It's almost impossible. Yeah. Unless the imam is literally reciting one ayah in one rak'ah and it's like this 20 minute taraweeh. If it's anything longer than that, it, you are bound to start feeling tired and fatigued and you just want to get out of the situation. The key is take it easy during iftar, man. Your stomach has been resting the whole day. All of a sudden you go ba 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 and you want to khalas. Take it easy, slow down, put some food in your belly. That's why it's a sunnah to break your fast with a date. Not a kilo of dates, huh? 1,600 a date, three if you want to be on the sunnah to be odd number of dates. Uh, drink some, some uh, water with that and then have a soup maybe. Leave alone the samosa, all the fried food and all this, uh, you know, food with high carbs and, and, and oily food. Leave that alone and eat, eat a nice salad you'll be comfortable. Your body now is adjusting to shifting to eating. Pray your taraweeh, you're in mint condition. After taraweeh, work out. It's my, my humble opinion. That's okay. for me, every Ramadan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, at least when I was going to the gym, I would, I would finish taraweeh, I would actually pray taraweeh in the masjid near the gym. And wow. from the masjid, ala tool to the gym. To me, those were the best 30 days of the gym through, throughout the year. Subhanallah, every year we're in Ramadan. Don't ask me why. Okay. It's just, it's just the way it is. It was the best workout I would ever have. And then afterwards, I would come home obviously tired. I'll have another meal, sleep, wake up for suhoor, have your suhoor, and case closed. Mm. You're, you've taken in around 1,200 to 1,500 calories. You've definitely burnt more than that during the fasting and then at night after the workout. Because when you work out, your body continues to burn calories even while you are asleep. Mm -hmm. And that is the key of actually working out at night. And so you're actually burning 24 hours. You're taking in less. Within 30 days, you are definitely going to see some satisfactory results. That should be your motivation to make it a lifestyle. Not that you're going to fast every day now. You can still do Monday and Thursday. But now you've learned that you're able to manage your food intake. You're able to control yourself just like you control yourself while fasting. You're able to uh, live a healthy lifestyle and it's no longer rocket science. It's something that is pretty much manageable. Mm. You know, Akhi, something, uh, subhanAllah, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned this right now because the next thing I was thinking about is like people that want to, you know, they want to fix their diet in Ramadan, but then they also want to exercise in Ramadan. And, 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 and the thing that I sometimes wondered is what's the best time to do it in Ramadan? Um, my experience, I'll just share what I, what I used to do because alhamdulillah, like I said, I, I used to personally, I used to go to a gym, which was in the basement of one of the buildings because I used to rent an apartment and it wasn't in our building, but the same company owned a bunch of buildings. And subhanAllah, that set I have in the back, they had the exact same one in the gym and I fell in love with this set. I was like, this is the set I love, you know, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. So um, uh, I would go in Ramadan when I was doing this before, I used to go before iftar. That, that was how I did it. I used to go before iftar by like an hour and a half or more. And I would exercise and I would go hard like I normally would. Instead of doing it, I used to do it maybe like three times a week normally. Then I, I, I brought it down to two or one, depending on how I felt. But I still went. And then when the, when the iftar came to break my fast, that's when I drank the water and 
you know? So I don't know, like, if, if, did, did you ever try that before? Like, did you ever try while fasting? I'll be very honest with you. When I was younger, yes, we actually used to play basketball for two hours before iftar. Okay. Um, uh, but that was when I was younger. In all honesty, it depends on the body type and the type of exercise. Okay. As you know, uh, I'm a CrossFit, uh, I'm a CrossFit fan and 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 a CrossFitter, uh, and so CrossFit is probably the most challenging, uh, uh, exhausting workout in the world. I think uh, I know no two people will disagree that CrossFit is very challenging. I tried uh, doing a CrossFit workout while fasting. I failed miserably. So. So my advice to the uh, listeners is you try. It's a trial and error. If uh, some, of the, some of the dietitians and some of the fitness freaks, they actually prefer your method, uh, Brother Wasim. They mm. say that uh, doing exercise while fasting is actually more rewarding for calorie burn, uh, burning calories than, than the, one, uh, the one I'm doing after eating. Mm. So it really depends on whatever floats your boat, as they say. Yeah. If you have the ability to do it while fasting, I think it's a better option. If you're unable to, then don't use as an excuse to quit working out altogether. Yeah. Do it after tarawih. I do it after tarawih because CrossFit is the, the warm up of a CrossFit exercise, uh, Sheikh, is equivalent to a workout anywhere else in the world. I mean, I, I don't know if you, some of you have seen the videos. No, I've seen them. You get hung. You get hung in the workout. Yeah, no, okay, I. I've... Mashallah, like to be honest, you, you 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 have a lot of good things going for yourself, Mashallah. Because for me, like the thing I was doing, which was similar, I was doing a little bit of Taekwondo myself. But now because of the lockdown, I can't <laughs> I can't go train anymore. Um, I but I but that was that was my yeah and the liyaqa, like the agility that I wanted to have is with jumping and kicking and punching and this was the thing that I did. But the CrossFit, I looking at the videos and I'm like Subhanallah, like I, I don't know how much I can last doing that. Um, yeah, CrossFit is tough. It's tough. Uh, so yeah, again, CrossFit is extreme. I, I don't want to promote extremism or something so challenging that the people give up. You no. don't need you don't need to do Taekwondo. You don't need to do CrossFit. Don't use what we prefer. Everyone has a passion. Everyone has a preference. Yeah. Find the thing that you like. If you like bike riding, then invest into a bike. That money you're spending on eating junk. Wallahi, if you collect it for a few weeks, you can buy a decent bike. If biking is your thing, then let it be. If a treadmill is your thing, let it be. If it's a, a, whatever it is, find your, your passion. It could be karate, it could be martial arts, it could be something else. Of course, within the halal boundaries, find your passion and let that be the means for you to remain fit and motivated. Yeah. Then you can add on top of that, working out from home, doing the standard push-ups and squats and whatever. But it's always good to find one thing that you actually like. Yeah, the thing too about uh, when we're looking at uh, working out and, and, and diet at the same time, one very important thing which I personally am very passionate about and I talk to people about a lot is, is the importance of consuming enough water during the day. You know, hey, having enough water. Hydration. I think a lot of people think, oh, as long as I'm drinking my coffee or my tea, I'm no, 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 Th that doesn't count. Put that aside. We're talking about just water. Only, you know, might, but, right? The, the problem people have, like, because- You know what this is? No, it's a water bottle. That is my means of making sure that I drink water all the time. What is Instead that? Instead of every time I want to drink water, I go get a cup, go to the dispenser or go to the fridge and open the fridge and fill it up in the whole hassle, which is what a lot of lazy people wind up, you know, because of laziness, they don't drink enough water. I have my uh, my kids or even myself, if I have to, I fill this up with water. This is at least um, three and a half, uh, how many milliliters? Maybe this is 1.5 liters, uh, more, more or less. You fill it up with water, put a couple of ice cubes because I prefer my water to be cold. And then I walk around the house with this wherever I go. If I'm yeah. sitting on my desk, I have it with me. If it's bed, uh, it's next to my bed. And then I use this, oh, this is my right hand. I don't know if it, sh it looks like my left. No, it looks like my right. That's no, your right, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> now and so you know you gotta if this is what it takes for you not to be lazy then so be it what i'm saying is very good point there's no excuse if there's a will there's a way for sure because the hadith says one third food one third water food and water are equal right most of us don't do that 
we drink a little bit at the end only when we feel thirsty, you know, and I want to stuff myself and there's not even space left to breathe, let alone have enough water. Because the problem, the thing is, brothers and sisters as well, um, one of the things that helps you digest better is when you have enough water in your system. If you don't have enough water in your system, how can you expect your stomach and your, your body to be able to move? Because otherwise you're going to have uh, dehydration and uh, I'm going to say this, constipation as well. You can have oh, yeah. a lot of what we call MSAC in Arabic. A lot of, I remember many Ramadans ago, um, I drank a lot of tea. Like I'm talking a lot of tea and I had a really, really bad case of constipation and I had to go to the hospital for it. But I thought, but I'm drinking tea. They said, this is caffeine. It dehydrates you. It does yes, the sir. opposite. So don't, don't look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, fruit juices. Don't look at pop. Don't look at these other things. Tea, even tea, even if it's green tea. Juice. Can I comment on fruit juices? A lot of people think that they, they're going to eat healthy and they're going to follow a diet. So they drink uh, juice, whether it is natural, freshly squeezed juice, or it, which is better, but still not good, or the bottled one you buy from the supermarket. Forget that stuff. You don't, you know, in, in, in an apple juice, can you, is it, is it healthy for your body to eat four or five apples? No, the amount of sugar, even though it's natural fructose, even though it's natural sugar that Allah created, that's still more than what your body requires per day. If you usually, when you drink a, a cup of apple juice, it has Allah knows how many apples and the same thing applies to any other fruit. It's actually a lot of natural sugar that is still beyond what your body needs. So if you want to eat, if you like fruits, then you should stick to the actual fruit. And even that should be done in moderation. Look, yes. Islam is a religion of moderation. Nothing should be overdone. Yeah. You can not just eat vegetables all day uh, or you can eat. That's why we're not vegetarian people. That You cannot eat uh, fruits all day. You cannot eat meat all day. You have to have a, a balanced diet, some, some uh, uh, mixed nuts with some uh, protein, with some, uh, you know, good, good carbs. Uh, there's a lot of good good stuff out there, but it has to be done in moderation as long as you're not going overboard with the amount of calories you take in. That's, and usually those juices and stuff are full of calories that yeah. people are not even aware of. Yeah, because with the juice, I mean, like the brother was they said right now, like, can you eat five apples? Most of us can't. And the reason why we can is because w when you're eating the actual fruit, the, you, you eat the fruit as a whole, like there's the fibers in it, everything, you know? And when you're drinking orange juice, it's just liquid, dude. You're just drinking it. But when you're eating an orange, there's, there's, there's the, 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 what do they call the fibers? You can't consume that much fruit as equal in sugar as drinking it straight from a cup. Yeah. You know? So we got to stay away from these extreme sources of sugar. You know, um, one, so someone I know, I think uh, it was my brother-in-law or someone, one thing he did, and he lost a lot of weight, inshallah, he can maintain that and continue with it. He cut out uh, bread, of all things. When bread is one of the things we bread. love. Bread is the bread. most dangerous thing out there. Yeah. Bread is one of the most decisive elements in being able to uh, lose weight. And uh, if you're Middle Eastern, if you're like from our people, that's probably the most difficult thing in the world. because Because... We eat bread for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My father will eat a, a banana inside of bread. Yeah. Don't ask me how. He will get a piece of bread, put a banana in it, a pita bread, and he will eat it. That, that's like some people eat pasta with bread. It just doesn't yeah. add up. But it's, it's a little crazy. Uh, but bread is one of those things that is very high in carbs, and, and it could definitely create an issue for you. If you're able to stay away from bread, whether brown or white or, or whatever the color it is, then ideally, especially in the early stage, that's one of the best ways for you to be able to shed some weight quite quickly. Yeah, because again, like if you, if you want to have that agility, if you want to be able to stand up in prayer in a, in a comfortable way, you need to have less weight. You need to be lighter. You need to, and plus if you, if you eat, by the way, this is something else. When you eat these, foods which are high in sugar or, or that are harmful, it doesn't just affect you physically, it affects you Oh yes. It affects your mood. You know, like if you, uh, if you overdo the sugar, you might get a headache. Crash. It's always like this. You go up and then you crash. And when you crash, it's like, oh, you just want to knock out, you want to sleep, you're tired, you're physically, mentally, psychologically, the whole system shuts down. 
uh, while you're doing a software update. That's how I see it. If you want to use technolo technological terms, it's like you're updating your laptop, your Windows, or your Android, and then during you, you sh suddenly the system shuts down. That's the worst thing you could do. Yeah, it's like a roller coaster, really. You know, if you've ever been to the park, you go up and then woo goes down like this. That's what happens. So you, lose you lose energy very quickly, right? One thing too that I want to mention uh, that this is my my personal experience, especially now that you mentioned how important the diet is, and I guess we'll we'll summarize inshallah in a bit and give some final. Um, uh, you know, a summary of what we said for those who just joined. I had this impression way, way back <clears throat> that as long as you exercise, eat whatever the heck you want. <laughs> That's cute. You're laughing. Yeah, that, 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 because look, that, that might be true in, in two cases. Number one, when you're young, and I'm guessing our target audience is not young. I don't think I'm speaking to 14, 15 year olds right now. I'm guessing most of those who are tuned in are in the 25 and above. Uh, then some are closer to our age. So if you're young, I would say to some degree, depending on another condition, your natural metabolism. Yes. So I would admit when I was younger, I could eat a chair and uh, a building and a tree. And somehow, some way, it, 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 nothing, nothing reflected. It, everything oh, seemed oh. to be fine. But that, it, it, depending if you're born with this kind of metabolism, you can get away with it. But eventually, it will catch up. And you don't want to get used to it to the point that you can't recover afterwards. Second case is if your metabolism is not that great to begin with, or if you reach, you become older, then all of that has to change. Yeah. You can add, eat whatever you want. And as long as you're exercising, it's going to work out. It's very basic math. Calorie intake, calories burnt. If there's a deficit, if they're equal, you will keep your weight. If there's a deficit, you will lose weight. If there's more calorie intake than burnt, you will gain weight. No, even if you're Arnold, yeah. you will yeah. gain weight. Yeah. When I, when I uh, got married in 2005, uh, for the first five years of marriage, we were not really, my wife and I, very serious about healthy you know we we were like the typical you know arab i don't know lebanese palestinian type of people we ate whatever whatever came um and i used to exercise i had my own set in the apartment it was a very basic set and my wife told me like she goes yeah you exercised back then but it didn't really show that much on you but as soon as we changed our diet in about 2010 2011 and then i started going really hard to the gym in 2000 and 12, I, I got back to what I was before. I found, I found that because I chose my food, I actually got better results from the weightlifting. Of course, of course. So, so the, this, the, this myth, which I was under the impression of is eat whatever you want. And as long as you weight, lift weights and do whatever, then it'll go. Uh, it, it, it's actually not even true. Even, and I'm like you, Akhwajdi, like I, I have high metabolism as well. I, I eat stuff when people are looking at me like, is this guy real? Like, is he eating it? Like, you, you, you ate this? You know, like they wouldn't believe it. And it wasn't like eating to the point where I was like, no, no, I ate. And we were like, how can you eat all this? I said, subhanAllah, it's just, just how it is. But so when you pick quality food, it makes your exercise, yeah, I mean, the time you spend and you sweat and you all do all that, make it worth it by picking the right things. It's like a, it's like a nice car. It wants the high end gas, gasoline, the fuel. Exactly. Nice cars, they want the high, the premium, right? Think of yourself as like that. Not only that, I mean, it's, it's the long run, long run. Again, let's look at statistics. Let's look at, just go to the hospital, visit the hospital. You don't want to end up with a chronic illness that will completely change your life. That's really even, if, if I were to look at it from a very, very basic point of view, forget about what you look, forget about whether you have a belly hanging or not, forget about body fat. On a very basic level, eating healthy, at least is maintaining the amana that Allah gave you. And therefore, if unless Allah had a decree for you in terms of the asbab, the means you're following, you are doing whatever you need to do to avoid having a disease that will be detrimental to your health later on. Whereas if you continue to follow your own eating habits, not caring much about looks, eventually it will hunt you down. Yes. And if, if you know anyone with diabetes, uh, then you understand what a serious issue you're talking about. Yeah. These people, the subhanAllah, may Allah, uh, may Allah cure all the, the ill people. I mean, Your foot may burn down. Your foot may actually burn. And if you have it over a heater and they won't even feel. And I've had this happen to some of my my grandmother. May Allah have mercy on her. 
Yeah. And so, you know, they can't eat anything. You're, oh, you're basically playing, it's a matter of life and death. The Russian roulette type of lifestyle, that's not, that's not the Muslim lifestyle, for no. sure. No. My wife just corrected me, said uh, 2007 guy who started our diet. So I'm sorry, I'm going to be in trouble after this. Uh... <laughs> and no, no, we don't hadith. accept that. Yeah. 100 push up for that mistake, Mr. Wasim. Inshallah, I don't know if I could do it right now. I just had breakfast, so we'll see. <laughs> Then, brother Wajdi, like I'll, I'll wrap up. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add something to what you said. Um, the hadith that we all know about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala asking us about, you know, five things, five things that the, the feet of the son of Adam are not going to move on the day of standing, Yom Al Qiyamah, until he's asked about five things. One of the versions of the hadith after says, "Wa fi jismihi fima abla." His body, how he actually wore it out. <laughs> so if you don't think it's important, your feet are not going to move until Allah is going to ask you about how did you use this body. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that there are two things which people are, are, are not aware of their bounties until they're gone. And they are, okay, health and, and time. Right. Right. So, and, you know, we have time right now. Let's use it for the health. Let's use it for, inshallah, taking care of ourselves. And at the end of the day, like and I mentioned this in the video, uh, before and I, you know, if not if not just about yourself, think about your children that you want to be able to be strong and play with. Think about your parents. Think about your dad, your mom. You know, my dad, may Allah have, may Allah give them long life. You know, uh, sometimes you can't get up. Like I, I'm able to actually grab my dad. He weighs more than I, do, and I lift him. No problem. Why? Because I'm healthy. I'm there. I can help my 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 aging parents. I'm sure they can can share the same passion. Like, isn't that beautiful when you can help your own parents? Not that they can't move. You can. You can actually lift them because you're taking care of yourself physically. Like how much energy will you get for that? Play with Absolutely. your kids, right? And that's that's the materialization actually of the hadith. Uh, uh, and I think I heard it either from Dr. Bilal or from uh, Abu Osama. You you posted that video. Yeah, Abu Osama. Yeah. Hadith of the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah is actually an embodiment of this concept because whether it is parents or other, I just I look at it as I've always looked at it as this. Uh, when whenever I'm working out uh, in the CrossFit. Um, it, it, sometimes it gets so difficult and so challenging that internally you want to quit. What I think about, to be honest with you, to motivate myself is, yeah. La qaddar Allah, there's a natural disaster. La qaddar Allah, something happened. I need to be able to handle business. Yes. If something were to happen to my family, if a robber were to enter my house, if somebody were to get run over, and I have to pick that person up and take him to uh, the hospital. In any situation, my parents, like you said, if something happened to my parents, they needed my physical assistance. I don't want to feel from my manhood point of view. I don't want to feel incapable. Yes. I don't want to feel like I'm handicapped because I cannot be a source of strength for others. So on a very basic level, as an example for my family, for my children, uh, for, for Muslims in general, if, if, I want, if I'm going to be in the forefront, of giving da'wah, then we have to also set an example on multiple level. We all have shortcomings, may Allah forgive us. No. But if the area where we're able to fulfill, then this is among them. You should be the strong believer that is depended upon after Allah, of course, and not just in terms of sharing knowledge, but in terms of everything. You want to be the one who can give charity when people need money, and you want to be the one who can teach them when they want to be taught, and even give them a physical uh, assistance when required. And that is what the, the, the beneficial Muslim is. That's how you rack up good deeds for Yom Al-Qiyamah because you're basically uh, doing ihsan on, on, that, on, on a multiple level. We're not there. I'm not there, but that's my motivation. That's my motivation. If you put that as a target, then inshallah, you'll be able to push yourself. Say, I want to be a strong believer to help the ummah when the ummah needs help. Not just about selfishness. Not about just selfishness and looking good in front of the mirror. Yes, because at the end of the day, like if you think we were talking about exercising before, one thing I'll, I'll mention is that the, the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, many of their battles were in Ramadan when they were fasting. Hey, no. so, you know, you want to, we want to talk about, oh, can I exercise when, uh, when during Ramadan? They used to fight, not fight, like with swords and spears and, you know, the, the, sacrifice their lives for their religion during Ramadan. So no. Ramadan, I think we should think about them as an inspiration for us. And because, alhamdulillah, we're, we're going to be home with our families, we have this thing, this this time, which one of the two things that we have, which we take for granted, time that we have. It's an opportunity for us to develop, if, if we haven't already, 
this habit of a healthy lifestyle so that inshallah when things are Allah willing back to normal again we have those habits and then we go back to work we can still incorporate those into our you know busier lifestyle so yeah. may Allah reward you for uh, being with us today it was a pleasure and uh, I, I think inshallah brothers and sisters I was talking to brother Wajdi about this we might, we might, we're thinking of maybe doing this on a routine basis, not just about fitness and health. We could talk about other things as well. Maybe we're, I'm thinking maybe like a once a month thing for now. We can think about that, inshallah. If anybody has any suggestions about any topic you want to discuss, you know, you can message Brother Wajdi, message, message me or, or both of us, and, and we can work out something and, and, and we can come for about an hour like we did today or so. And, you know, we will uh, do our very best to address whatever you guys want. Um, one thing else that I was thinking of, whether it's before Ramadan or after Ramadan, is if, anybody, if you want to have a, just a strictly a, a Q&A session, questions and answers about the fitness topic, and uh, ask us about the, you know, things you have doubts about, or you've started a routine or whatever, uh, this is another option. So we're leaving it up to you. Like today was basically our, our test run, inshallah, to see how everyone reacts to it. Uh, it will be available, inshallah. I'll make sure to get it ready and... I'll upload it. it. It'll be on Facebook for sure after this because it's there. Automatically, the lives, they stay on Facebook, if I'm not wrong. If not, I will definitely uh, upload it on Facebook and I will upload it on YouTube. And Brother Wajdi will upload this on his channel as well, inshallah. And uh, YouTube and Facebook. Brother Wajdi, do you, just going to leave it for you. If, if you have any last uh, advice for us, myself, or anybody here about anything with Ramadan coming up. Yeah, just uh, don't, don't leave the matter up to uh, haphazardness. Have a plan. Incorporate, uh, yeah, and you make a, a, a plan for yourself that you will adhere to. Be it Quran recitation, uh, be it uh, learning something, memorizing something. If you leave the matter unorganized, then you probably get uh, lousy results. So uh, my advice to myself, of course, first and foremost, and to everybody else, set up a plan. You, you must work out every day. It's not, it's not negotiable. Consider it as an obligation on you to remain alive, an obligation on you to keep your job. I don't know how you want to put it. To, everybody can play with his own mind. But yep. tweak it tweak it so that you must do it on a daily basis, just like you must eat healthy and take care of your food intake uh, during Ramadan. And you owe it to yourself because, subhanAllah, this Ramadan is different and you failed in the past, then this is your chance now to, to make among the many changes you have to adapt to. It's just other things. It's just adding things to, uh, to, for you to adapt to. It's now much easier because you're not living the same lifestyle of last Ramadan. It's a completely new Ramadan. So now you just make it a, you know, a complete package. Part of this package is eating properly and working out on a daily basis. Try out for a month. Once you see the results, which is what everybody who has seen results will tell you. Once you've seen the results, then you can't go back. I, I remember when I, you know, uh, when I first started working out and before working out, I would occasionally go play football or soccer, depending on where, which country you live in. And, you know, the average person, uh, Brother Wasim, after 25, 30, 40 minutes, they are already maxed out and they're on the side. You know, you think that you just need to take them to the ICU because they're about to die. Uh, after, after I began to work out regularly, by Allah's grace, we would play soccer for two hours and I'm 20 years older than the people I'm playing against. And after it's all said and done, um, I can go for, I, in my opinion, I can go for another hour or two. That energy, because you get, becomes a, such a motivation for you never to go back. Yes. When you're in Salah and you make sujood and you want to get up from sujood and you feel that you have the strength to literally Pull, you know, push yourself off the sujood and, and land standing. Or when you make rukur, you feel like you're, you're like a, a, a 90 degree, uh, you know, uh, angle. And you feel your body, this is the strength you have. It, it gives you this kind of happiness. There's a, there's a happiness that is triggered because of that. You, for you to experience those, you need to invest. Yes. So don't deprive yourself of this investment because once you taste that pleasure, then inshallah, you won't go back. For sure. And the thing too that, mashallah, I want to add one thing to this, like a cherry on top of a healthy cake that you presented now. Okay, is yeah. <laughs> organic cake. Is this. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. If you 
are waiting for somebody else to come to you with the to come with you to the gym, and you're you're depending on somebody else to motivate. You're gonna be waiting a long time, so you have to have some sort of self motivation. And the du'a of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which we he seeks refuge with Allah from certain things. One of them is بعض ذكر من العجز والكسل. In in, in the morning and the evening. Yes, yes. You you seek refuge with Allah from what? From ajz, which is inability. Or ajz can also mean old age, like inability during old age, if I'm not wrong, or just inability in general, or incapability, to correct me if I'm that, and kasa, which is laziness, right? So those are things which Abu used to seek refuge with Allah from. So you're asking Allah to give you the motivation to to just go that direction and stay that way. Beautiful, sah. Yeah. Barakallah feek, akhir. Jazakallah khair for. being with me today, it's it's a it's gonna be it's a first, but it's definitely not a last. Akhi. Barakallah <laughs> fi. May you have a great Ramadan, brother Wajdi, and uh, brothers and sisters, just like Allah for joining us today. Uh, this will be available, inshallah, for uh, viewing later on. Subhanak Allah, bhabdik ashadu an la illa anta sabbatu bilaik. Akh Wajdi, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.